Hey guys, this week in math, we're going to be reviewing fractions. So we're going to go over a couple of things that you'll need to know to be able to do your assignments. One is just being able to identify a fraction by looking at a picture, being able to know what fraction is represented, uh, looking at a number line and knowing where on the number line to identify a specific fraction or be able to write it. And we're also going to be going over comparing two different fractions, okay? Which one is smaller, which one is larger. So the first thing that I wanna do is just kind of review using a brain pop video over fractions. So let's watch that real fast. Wait, stop. You're supposed to share with the whole class. Moby, that's not fair. Everyone is supposed to get equal parts of the sandwich. Hmm, what is a fraction? A fraction tells you the number of parts out of a whole. Not that kind of whole, Moby. Something is whole when it has all of its parts. Mmm, I love muffins. This whole muffin has two equal parts. In a fraction, the number of parts goes under a line. There are two parts. You took one part of the muffin, and that number goes on top. So this fraction shows you took one out of two parts. You can also write this as one half. What is a half? When you split something in half, you make two equal parts. Right, Moby. There are two halves in a whole. Half for you and half for me. There are two equal pieces, and we each get one piece. Hmm, sometimes I see a half moon at night. And everyone loves a half day of school. Hmm, what is a third? We can share this cake between you, me, and Grandpa. We can cut the cake into thirds. That means we divide it into three equal pieces. We each get one slice. So Grandpa gets one out of three slices. We each get one third of the whole cake. There are three of us, but only one is a robot. So one out of three of us is a robot. Hmm, what is a fourth? I love apple pie, and this pie has four equal slices. You took one slice. So you took one out of four slices, or one fourth of the slices. One fourth is also called one quarter. Exactly, Moby. There are four quarters in a dollar. So one quarter is one-fourth of a dollar. I can divide a lot of things into fourths. Like a piece of paper, a cup of water, an inch, or an hour. I think all this sugar is making us sick, Moby. We better cut up the sandwich so everyone can get an equal piece. It's okay, Moby. I've got a slice saved right here. Wait, you're supposed to give me half. Uh, I guess you can keep mine. After watching that video, it's a good little reminder. We remember talking about fractions, right? 
One of the things that they did not talk about in that video was the difference between the top number and the bottom number. So with all fractions, we have a line. The top number is called our what? It's called our numerator. Good job. So the top number is our numerator. And what is the bottom number called? The bottom number is called our denominator. Remember our denominator. So he's down there on the bottom. So top number is our numerator. Bottom number is our denominator. Okay. One thing to remember is they talked about it in, in the video is the bottom number. Your denominator is how many pieces there are all together. The denominator is how many tick marks there are all together on a number line. That is representing our whole. The numerator on top, that is representing our parts, okay? That is how many pieces are shaded in, how many pieces have been eaten, how many jumps you have made on a fraction strip on a, on a number line, okay? We're gonna watch one more Brain Pop video to help us review about fractions. And then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more. Enjoy the video. This sandwich has four equal parts. You took two fourths of the sandwich. That's the same as one half. Equivalent fractions are equal to the same amount, but use different numbers. What are some fractions that are equal to one half? Becca and Tasha are sharing a sandwich, and each gets half. Their sandwich has six equal parts, so each person gets three out of six parts, or three-sixths of the sandwich. You can draw pictures to help you see how fractions are equivalent. Mike and Brian are sharing a pizza. Their pizza has eight equal slices. So each person gets four out of eight slices, or four eighths of the pizza. Four eighths is equal to one half. Moby. On this rectangle, 5 out of 10 equal parts are blue. If you look at the rectangle a slightly different way, you can tell that half is blue. So, 5 tenths is also equal to 1 half. Hmm, what are some fractions that are equal to 1 fourth? 2 out of 8 parts of this quilt are yellow. That means two-eighths of the quilt is yellow. If you look at the quilt a little differently, you can see that one-fourth is yellow. So two-eighths is equal to one-fourth. What fraction of the tiles is green? Three out of the twelve tiles are green, or three-twelfths. You can also see that one-fourth of the tiles are green. So, three-twelfths is equal to one-fourth. Hmm, what are some fractions that are equal to one-third? It's time for dessert. This cake has six equal slices. Two slices have candles. So, two-sixths of the cake has candles. If you look at the cake in a slightly different way, you can see that one-third has candles. So two-sixths is equal to one-third. Did you eat the candles too? There are 12 eggs, but four of them are cracked. Four-twelfths of the eggs are cracked. 
If you group the eggs differently, you can see that one out of three equal groups are cracked. One third is cracked. So four twelfths is equal to one third. You're trying to glue the eggs back together. Okay. Equivalent fractions can show the same amount using different numerators and denominators. Can be a little confusing, but you can draw pictures or build models to help you understand. Uh, not that kind of model. Hey guys, don't you just love Annie and Moby? I love the way they explain things where I can understand it, and plus, Moby, he's just so funny. So, let's look at a couple things that they talked about in this video on comparing fractions. And they said that you can draw pictures out, right? I think that's a great idea, is to use some visuals when you're trying to figure out if a fraction is equivalent or not. So let's look, I drew a couple of little fractions here, and um, I want us to name them. I want us to decide the numerator and denominator for each, okay? So for this first one, I'm gonna shade in this bottom piece, all right? We know that our bottom number, our denominator, is the whole. How many pieces are in this whole? And we have one, two, three. We have three pieces in our whole. And our top number, our numerator, remember, is how many pieces are shaded. How many pieces did somebody eat? Um, how many tick marks? down is the fraction on a number line, okay? This is our part. And how many parts are shaded in? Just one. So this that I drew represents one third. One piece is colored in out of a total of three pieces, okay? Now what if I wanted to take this other drawing that I did? I have pieces. It's going to turn into a fraction, but how am I going to make it match this one over here? Well, first, let's find out what our denominator is. We are going to, I'm going to make this just a little bit more equal looking here. We're going to count our pieces all together. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know our denominator is going to be a six. I'll write that down, six. Now, I am wanting to compare these two. I want to make them equal, equivalent. Remember the word equivalent has the word equal in there. It just means the same. It's just a big word for same, okay? So if I look, I can kind of see what pieces I could color in just by looking and comparing. And this is what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to color in two, okay? So let's just, we'll see. I don't know if I'm right yet or not because I have to check my work. But I feel like it looks the same, like it would be the same amount, but I have to check my work. So I've colored two in, okay? So here my fraction's two sixths. So I've colored two out of six, all right? Now on here, I have a third and I have two sixths. I'm very confused. How am I going to check this? How am I gonna see? If these two fractions I came up with are equal, let's see if you remember a special strategy that we can use to check this. I'll give you a hint. Maybe like this. That was my butterfly. Do you remember the butterfly method? Remember, anytime we're comparing two fractions, super easy. We are going to draw a line to make one of the wings. And we're gonna ask ourselves, what is three times two? Three times two is six. Now let's draw and make our other wing around that denominator in this numerator. What is six times one? Six. Are my two answers the same? They sure are, so that means that I have an equivalent fraction. That means that I have compared them, I checked my work, and I know that my work is good. 
Now something else guys, do not forget to use are your interactive journals. There's some good stuff in here, okay? Things that we've already done. So it talks about <laughs> in detail how to compare fractions. We've done this, right? And in our journal also, we did practice ones. We compared them. These pages are in your journal. Also in your interactive journal, there are these two pages talking about equivalent fractions and showing what it looks like, some examples. And also in your journal, we made fraction strips, okay? So that's a really good visual for you to look and be able to say um, that, let's see what we have here. So that two halves equal a whole, right? You could look at this and say that two sixths are the same as a third, okay? So these interactive journals, use them. These are so handy. This is why I sent those home with you, okay? So um, looking at being able to label fractions, comparing fractions, I have no doubt with the resources I've given you in the video and you using your interactive journal, you're gonna do great on this week's math assignment. If you have any questions though, you ask, okay? Have a great day.